In today's video, I am going to be breaking down some covered call ETFs that you may like to invest in if you love dividends like myself. So let's get down, let's check these out, and a little bit of a strategy that I've got going right now. So let's check these out. So the first ETF is no real stranger to us because I've spoke about it quite a bit in previous videos about a year ago, and that is ZWK. ZWK is a covered call ETF that holds US banks now really quickly if you're trying to figure out what a covered call really is of course I do have some videos on this channel about that however just in just a very simple explanation that may or may not help is basically let's say you have held stock let's say Bank of America stock and you've got a hundred shares of it you can sell a call option against those shares and that premium that you got from that call option is essentially paid to you as a dividend or capital gains uh, but however basically uh, in these ETFs it's not you holding the stock it's them you're just investing in their strategy that's why their MERs are a bit higher when it comes to covered call ETFs it's one way to get higher dividends or uh, basically just capital gains in most cases but it is a good way to invest if you're looking to basically live off of an income and have uh, not have to worry about a working income or whatever happens in your life so ZWK right now has an 8% yield so you're getting paid out about 8% at this point in time so if you were to invest as an example a hundred dollars then at this point in time you'd be getting around eight dollars per year if you were to invest let's say a thousand dollars then you'd be getting about eighty dollars a year and if you invested ten thousand dollars you'd be getting around eight hundred dollars per year and you can continue on hundred thousand dollars equals eight thousand dollars a year you can continue to add zeros as far as you really want depending on how much money you got However, the MER is more expensive than most other ETFs. That's how much you're basically paying for, in this case, BMO to invest your money. Its average volume isn't terrible at 20,000 shares traded on average every single day. So as long as you're not buying like 20,000 shares at a sitting, then you should be fine. If you've got, let's say, 40,000 shares and you wanted to out basically 30,000, it's going to take a while because there's only an average volume of 20,000 shares. Now this is the recent stock chart and it's been up and down. Obviously the whole stock market went down during this time because of the virus. However, since that time it recovered nicely until of course the recent issues that have been happening now something that I was pointing out for a whole entire year is look at the volume that was happening before interest rates started to rise before the stock market started to collapse and that is exactly what I was telling everyone was going to happen is interest rates were going to rise because the volume on these were going crazy. People and big investors were looking for a way of being able to make huge dividends and covered call options are, uh, covered calls are a fantastic way of basically trying to fight uh, the stock market going down. It's a great way and it, it's like it's downside protection and that it pays a huge dividend and this is why I was thinking that the stock market was going to go down and it did and I was right. Now this is one of the ETFs that did have a dividend cut recently that was about last year around this time. However, that is mostly because at that time and as far as I can see right now, the premiums for call options have gone down yes because of mostly most in most cases and i'm not saying gamestop is the reason for this but there was a lot of call options being purchased and usually that means that there's going to be of course a higher dividend if there's more options being purchased when it comes to this because premiums go higher that's just how it seems to happen 
Top 10 holdings for this ETF, however, is Goldman Sachs, First Republic, and there's a few others. Now, something to keep in mind with these is Bank of America has historically done extremely well when interest rates go up. They make more money off of interest. That's just how it's been over the last many, many years. Next is the BMO Covered Call Canadian Bank ETF, ZWB. Now this one has a 7.14% yield at this time I'm making this video and it's got an average volume of almost 200,000 shares traded every single day. Now before you start saying, well, why would you invest in banks right now? It's because interest rates are rising. We are already in a technical recession. I don't care what people say. We are currently in a recession. We've been in a recession since January 1st. And of this year, which means that we've been almost in a recession for an entire year, yet they still say we'll be in a recession next year. Well, guess what? Technically speaking, we're in a recession, and in most cases, you don't know you're in a recession until you're out of a recession, which means that we're probably right in one right now, and the banks are doing just fine. Interest rates are rising as well, which means that they make more money off of their loans. And guess what? Anytime that they make more money off of their loans, they make more money, which means that they can pay a bigger dividend eventually. And we can see that during the COVID or the virus, I'll probably get dinged for the video for saying that. But when it comes to the, the virus, we learned that banks don't just make money off of interest. They got a half a trillion different things that they do, like bank fees, which is huge, ETFs that they're now getting into where they make an MER, and so many other things. So they're pretty well set, especially in Canada, because the Canadian big six banks haven't cut a dividend for well over 100 years. Something else I've noticed is a lot of charts show a double bottom, which is kind of interesting. But yes, the Canadian banks did pretty well nothing. Just paid out dividends for many, many years before the virus hit. Virus hit, went and tanked. I'm so glad I was buying a lot of Canadian banks during this time. And since then, they've blown up. They hit a triple top, which is always a sign of going down. And now they've hit a double bottom, which is potentially maybe going up. Who knows? We'll just have to see. This is one of the few covered call ETFs that did not lower their dividend. Um, most covered calls did last year, roughly around this time right there. This ETF did not, and in fact raised their dividend as well, which makes sense because you're also getting paid the dividends of the stocks that the ETF holds. It's not just the premiums from the call, covered calls, which means that, yes, the Canadian banks are raising their dividends all the time too recently. The top 10 holdings, this one does the big six banks. This one is a bit different. Obviously, you're going to see a couple of the call options there, but... Uh, you're going to see the big six banks here listed. You're going to see 27.2% of the portfolio is in ZEB, which is the BMO Equal Weight Banks ETF. Now, what you're getting there is just basically these. However, I'm going to say most likely that that 27% is never traded as a covered call. And these banks right here, we will most likely be seeing traded as covered calls or at least equity for that. Next is ZWH. Now, I personally am high on the U.S. market. I think that the U.S. market is going to recover earlier than the Canadian market. This one's average volume is 22,000 shares per day at a 6.6% yield. This one didn't do a ton. It, it, it went up and down for a, a few years before the virus hit. Virus hit, and then, of course, after the tank, everything recovered. So did this. Again, double bottom, which is kind of interesting. Something that I do uh, find really interesting is that right there. So if this gets above 22 or so dollars, it could be interesting, and it could lead the it, it, not necessarily the stock market entirely, but it, it could show to me that potentially that the stock market could continue to go higher. Again, this one also did not lower a dividend, which is nice to see. And yes, all of these do pay a monthly dividend, which is why I personally absolutely love covered call ETFs in most cases, in not all cases, but most cases they do pay a monthly dividend, which if you're trying to use this as an income replacement or supplement, it's a very good way of doing so. 
Its top holdings are essentially the top holdings weighted to the stock market. So here we're seeing Microsoft, Apple, Chevron, Coca-Cola, Home Depot, Verizon, ABV, Pfizer, which nobody likes that company right now, but Procter & Gamble and JP Morgan Chase. All of these are pretty solid companies, Pfizer being the outlier, and of course, kind of an interesting makeup of stocks. It's kind of some of the top stocks in the US stock market. And I think that they, like I mentioned before, will recover before the Canadian market. Now, I hope that you've enjoyed today's video. If you're still thinking that there's some downward pressure, covered call options or, or covered call ETFs are a good way to kind of protect your money while getting paid out at the same time. So it's, it's an option. Definitely do your own research. Never trust any random person online. And I'll see you guys again next time.